Coach. Okay, well, first, uh, not to take any way, anything away from Penn State, um, so start with them. They did a really good job, well coached, like we said. Uh, the team played physical. They were prepared to come in here uh, and play the game that they did. Uh, so credit to Coach Franklin, their team. Um, they play hard, and, and they played physical tonight. Uh, and, you know, I thought our crowd was fantastic. Uh, I thought the energy and uh, what they brought tonight, I mean, all that in the environment, like you said, it was exactly what we thought it would be. Um, and so, you know, we appreciate that. Uh, we're disappointed in the performance. We're disappointed in the, in the loss, obviously. And you can look at the stats. Uh, it's pretty matter of fact. I think football is really comes down to that. Uh, just the execution piece and you lose a turnover battle that's number one and then I think tackling you know that was another area that we can improve on um, but overall you know red zone they were five for five in the red zone we were two for four uh, and those penalties hurt us or excuse me the, the turnovers hurt us um, when it was all said and done but you know for us as a team you know like I told our guys in the locker room there I mean it's Football is a matter of fact. You got to you got to be able to do your job. You got to be in the right position. Um, you got to execute the plays that we have out there, and, and uh, we got to be better at that. And that's got to that's got to start on Sundays. That goes all the way through the week. Um, that's what we do as coaches. We get our guys prepared. We didn't have them prepared well enough tonight to go out there and play the game that we wanted to. Um, so I've got to do a better job. We all do as coaches to get these guys prepared to go out there and play against really good football teams. Uh, they continue to keep getting better. Right as the season goes on, and Penn State was was that football team tonight, um, and so credit to them. You know, they they did their job, and we have areas that we know we need to improve on, and we'll work on those. We'll identify those specifically on Sunday, what they are. We'll work on those on Sunday, then we'll flush this game. We'll get on to Missouri. All right, and that'll be the mindset. And the key is, you know, really how we handle the disappointment. Um, this is football. Things happen in football, and. How you handle it is really the key to the success of your football team, in my opinion. And everyone's going to have some type of disappointment at some point. All right, we're two and zero coming this game. Now we lost this football game, and we still have a long season ahead of us. And there's a lot of football to play. So what we do moving forward is going to be the key to our success. All right, and this season. And I think those guys understand that. Um, I think the coaches understand that. But we got to get it done at the end of the day. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And so, uh, myself, um, that's where it begins. And then, you know, for everybody else in there, we know what we have to do moving forward. So those guys were all ears, and we will get back to work on Sunday. But uh, congratulations to Penn State. Uh, I'm disappointed for our players as well. I know they worked hard this week in practice. They wanted to come out and play well. Um, and so those guys, you know, they're hurt right now. And we got to take that into the next week and find ways to improve in those areas. So we will do that. This team will do that. We will do that. Uh, we will do that as coaches. And we will have our guys through this week of preparation ready to go when we go play against Missouri on Saturday. But uh, I do want to thank everybody for being at the game and, and what they brought. Uh, that was awesome. And now we got to go out there and we got to put the time and the work in to make sure that we are prepared to go out there and play the way that we all hope we can play and that are expect, you know, to our expectations and the standards that we have for this football team. So with that, questions? Back to the coach. Um, Ike Jones with the War Report. Coach, was the messaging mostly from the coaches to the players, or were there any players that were actually vocal in the locker room to try to get the spirits in the right place? Uh, no, I mean, I, I think, yeah, the spirits were in the right place. I don't, I don't, think, it, I don't think it was the spirits being in the right or wrong place. Uh, I think it's, when you look at it, I think it's pretty matter of fact. It comes down to, you know, we got to be in the right gaps or we got to run the right routes we got to do all the things you got to execute you know what you're doing out there that's really what it comes down to um, I thought the emotion all week long was was where it needed to be uh, these guys they, they put in time um, they prepared but we got to be better at it and and there's things that we know that we can improve on and so I'll say it and I've said it every week I really believe in, in the process and how you put in the work uh, each and every day and that's that's what matters. And so where do we miss that? We'll identify that. What were the things that they did that um, you know, we weren't prepared for, or we didn't see, or things that we have to be better at? That's exactly what we identify and we work on those. Because you'll see them again. You know, that's the one thing. You'll see that, uh, teams will watch that, and so you gotta go back and you gotta fix your problems is what you have to do. And so 
to me, that takes discipline to do that. All right, to do it each and every day, um, and to stick with that discipline approach. It takes a lot of toughness to do that over and over and over. And then you got to believe in what you're doing. All right, that's a key. And so those three factors there, that discipline, toughness, and conviction, are the keys to our success moving forward and the things we have to do. And then as coaches, no different. We got to put a plan in there and make sure that we are dialed as coaches and we have the, the guys in the right spots. That's our job as coaches to get our players prepared. Uh, we owe that to them and uh, everybody in that locker room knows that. Uh, Ryan, we saw TJ sort of holding his shoulder a couple times after uh, for that awkward landing in the second half yep. when he went more to Robbie. Was that TJ not feeling too well on the shoulder? Or was that just well, yeah, he got he got touch. banged up a little bit in the game. I think you know some other guys did as well, um, and that's football. That happens during the games and all that. And so, guys, uh, <clears throat> I don't think that impacted too much of, of the decision to go with Robbie at that point. Um, you know, but TJ was trying to make plays out there as well, and Robbie came in and did some good things for us. Uh, but just it's not enough. And I think the key in this one here is halftime was 14 to six. You know, the game's not out of hand. You're not playing like you want to in the first half. Uh, but the game's still close. You know, you're not that far out. We have a chance to get the ball back, drive down the score. I think we went three and out on that drive there. And that was one that, that hurt us just from a momentum standpoint. Uh, but even at that point, you know, the score is not out of hand. And, you know, it comes back to, you know, us executing. And, uh, but the decision for that was not necessarily off of, you know, him not being able to go. TJ's a tough guy. You know, he showed toughness tonight too. And um, we felt like Robbie, had some put some plays in there, and that he could get some things going, and he did. Move the ball down the field. We scored. Had a nice throw to Jarquez, uh, that made a great play there. And you know that's uh, probably too little, you know, obviously uh, at that point, and uh, probably a little too late there. But at the same time, those guys were executing. We just had to do more of that. Mark, hey, Coach, uh, what was the big difference from the second quarter to the third quarter? Because the momentum really changed. What do you mean specifically? Like. Outscored 17 to nothing in the third quarter, turned sure. them all over twice. Yeah, well, the turnovers that's a big factor, you know, that, that comes into play. Um, you know, and it's a game of momentum, too, right? That's one thing you got to get it back, you got to get the momentum when you're down, you got to get some momentum, you got to create that, um, you got to go execute to do that. Um, and when you make some plays, I think you feel that momentum, uh, but really, we just didn't get into a, uh, a consistent enough groove to get that momentum back. And, and credit to Penn State, too. Those guys were playing well. They were running the ball effectively. So they had some things in the run game. They were creating some big explosive plays from that standpoint. So we never got the momentum like we needed to in the second half of that third to fourth quarter. Hey boss. Um, Brian, what were they able to do in the run game, in particular, they outrushed you guys by 120 yards? Yeah, well, I think we, you know, they broke some tackles. Uh, their backs ran hard. Um, I don't know if there's anything schematically that they necessarily did um, that we hadn't seen. I think their kids just made some good plays and you know, they broke some tackles. I think there were some opportunities for us to make those plays. Um, and those guys, we knew. We knew that their running backs were good. We knew that they had a chance to, they got in the open field, we got a tackle. Uh, but really it was that. You know, they had some explosive runs. I don't know how many, but I know they had several explosive runs. That creates the, the large gap and difference in the, in the rush game. And then as a follow, what were they able to do to slow you down um, running the ball? Um, well, they moved up front. You know, we ran the ball fairly well. They, they did some things, and we knew they would. I mean, their D-line moved. Um, they hit us in the backfield a couple times. They created some penetration, created some negative plays. And, you know, I don't know all the answers and the reasons why that happened, uh, but that's what I saw on the field today. And so when you get some negative plays and early downs, the, the goal was to stay ahead of the chains. And I think we got behind the chains because of that. Um, but we had some big explosive runs in there as well, which didn't have enough. And when the score starts to get to what it is, you know, you're not running the ball as much. You got to throw it, you got to put it in the air, you got to try to move the ball down the field. You got to use a little tempo to try to just get back into a rhythm and, and really try to score faster because you got to make up a lot of ground because of the score. So that becomes a factor in the game as well. Yeah. Brian, was there ever any consideration at any point in the game to put Zach in? Uh, yeah, we talked about it. And, you know, I think, you know, we wanted to keep Robbie in there and, and let him keep playing. You got an opportunity to get in there and do that. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I think that, you know, that'll be something. We'll evaluate everything as we go into this week. All right, that's what we always do. And see what's going to be the best combination for us to be prepared and ready to go out there and play against Missouri. So 
Um, we go back and look at the film and really dissect it and figure out what the real issues are. Because I, I you know, it's not one player. That's the one thing. You know, in, in football, it's never just one guy. All right, it comes back to an entire team effort or lack thereof. You know, when it's all said and done, and you win as a team, you lose as a team. I mean, that's really what the message is. So, you know, we'll look at why, and um, but I'm not going to put all the pressure, you know, and reasons on one particular player. It's just, you know, what were we doing or what were we not doing? Um, that's really what we have to dissect and, and look at and make sure that we are better prepared for those things. We go into this next week. Coach Far back right, Jeff. I'm Ryan Jeff Spiegel, ABC 3340. My concern are you about uh, TJ's turnovers? I think there are five in three games. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm concerned about the turnovers in general. And, you know, on the year, I think we are minus eight. All right, when it's all said and done. So, and I said that last week, that's not a sustainable formula, right? We pride ourselves in taking care of the football. We talk about all about the ball. I thought, you know, we've done that in the past. We've taken care of the ball. Uh, we got to get it. We got to get some takeaways on the defensive side, but we can't turn it over. And, and that's, you know, that's the reality. I think everybody knows that. But it happened, and you got to be able to overcome it. But we had too many in this game, and the four turnovers become, you know, that's a change of possession that you don't have, and that doesn't create field position for you. It hurts you, put our defense in some bad spots. Um, so we got to eliminate those. You know, and that's, I think everybody knows they got to eliminate the turnovers, got to take care of the football, you got to play field position. And, you know, the one thing about playing quarterback, sometimes, you know, those plays aren't there. And you may have to throw it away. It could be three plays in a row, and it's not what you want, but that's the right decision, and, and we got to be able to do that. Um, I'll look at the film and see exactly why those things happen. But we got to clean that up. The turnovers have to be cleaned up. We got to be better at that. We got to win that turnover battle. You know, our goal is always plus one, but we haven't been that. And, you know, in a game like this, when you're playing a really good football team, turn the ball over that many times, you know, they're going to take advantage of it. They're going to put points on the board. And, you know, you're also putting your defense out there quite a bit. You know, we did that tonight. Jason. How valuable can a, a, a night like this be for, for Robbie, just for really his first real extensive playing time sure. in the offense? Yeah, well, um, we'll see. I mean, I, it really comes down to that. I know Robbie, here's the thing, you know, those guys, they want to learn. All right, they do. They really want to go out there. They want to learn. They want to be better. Um, every one of those guys are disappointed. They know that, you know, we have a, a better football team than what we showed tonight. But we got to go out there and we got to do that. And so there's work to be done. And win or lose, there's always going to be work to be done. You know, that's that's the beauty of football. I think that's the challenge for all of us, especially when you get disappointed like we did today. You know, guys are really disappointed. Will you, will you come back and will you go to work? Right. That's I think that's the lesson learned. And. It happens in front of a lot of people. It happens, you know, on a big stage. When you go out there and you're test at the end of the week, you know, if you fail that by not getting the win, you know, are you willing to come back to work? Are you willing to fight through some of the things that maybe didn't go well and maybe that as a coach or a player you didn't do well? Are you willing to come back and work on those things? I think those guys are. And and that's what we as coaches have to do a better job with them. All right. They'll learn. You know, these guys are students of the game. They'll learn. And so we gotta teach better. And we got to help these guys through some of those struggles that we had tonight. We'll do that. And I think for Robbie, you know, there's a lot of film now, more film that he can take and, and watch and learn and grow and develop. Um, and I fully expect that he'll do that. You know, he'll he'll be in the film room. He'll be watching. He'll be working on those things. I expect everybody on his football team will be doing that. Because again, it comes back to you know, do we execute in this on this particular play or this situation or not? It's really kind of a yes or no. Right when it comes down to it, and so the emotion part it was there, but it really it's a matter of fact, and and that's what we have to do, is make sure that we understand that and why, and learn from it, and then be able to go out there and execute those things better because we're going to see those things again, all right, throughout the season. To the right, Terry. Terry, I said that you stand on a Birmingham. So you've spoken these past few weeks about the benefit of having multiple guys in the quarterback position, but obviously when you get down to a deficit, sometimes it's good to use the confidence in one guy and to also use that leadership. So I want to know just how do you overcome that if you continue kind of cycling through different quarterbacks if one doesn't get the chance to build that confidence? Sure. Yeah, well, you know, in games like this and moments like this, you go back and reevaluate that too. You know, it's it's uh you know, the one thing about, about coaching and, and operating a football team throughout the season, you, know, you have a plan if it's working, right? You continue to use that plan. If the plan doesn't work, then you reevaluate the plan. 
can, you look at it and go, all right, is this the best thing moving forward? I think that's that's always got to be the case. Uh, and it's not just the quarterback position. It's really everywhere. I think as a coach, you look at the schemes, you look at the, the play calling, you look at the practice plan, you know, all those things. What what do we have to do now to make this football team better? You know, And that's, that's the challenge we have, and that's really where you get to sit down and go, all right, what is the focus going to be this week, and what do we have to do to get ourselves back into a rhythm, create the momentum that we need. And so we'll look at all that. We'll reevaluate what the plan is, what it looks like moving forward, all right, who those players are going to be um, that can go out there and execute that plan that you want to put together. That's a winning formula you know, going into this next game. So we'll do all those things this week. <coughs> Brian, um, 11 touches for Tank Bigsby today, including just one in the second quarter. Um, was there a plan to get him the ball more? Why, why do you think he didn't have more touches? Today? Well, I think, the, I think the obvious is that we got behind and we had to throw the football. I mean, that's really what it came down to. Um, but the I, don't know, I don't know all the reasons, but yeah, we, we want to get Tank the ball. We want to get Jarquez the ball. We want to run the football. And I think the big thing was you know, the score and trying to do some things to get him the ball. Um, and the pass game is included in that too. So there was opportunities for him there <coughs> as well. So it's not all just the touches in the run game, it's touches in the pass game and, and other opportunities. So, uh, but we do want to get the ball in his hands and, and those tailbacks. You saw Jarquez tonight when we did that. He was on a throw, but he got a chance to get out there and, and make a big play. So um, we'll look at that again and, and figure out how we get the ball in our playmakers' hands. And sometimes the game changes. Sometimes the plan that the, the team you're playing, they know that too. And, and what they're trying to take away, so you got to make some adjustments in the game as well. Yep. Two more. No. Um, Coach Snow Griffith from the Wageman. Um, what was the difference between their offense and the red zone, finishing with five rushing touchdowns as well? <coughs> well, they finished with five rushing touchdowns. All of their five yeah. touchdowns. They ran the ball well. They did. They really did. They ran the ball well in the red zone. And um, I thought they were physical in the red zone when they ran it. We tried to be down there as well, wanted to run the football and do those same things. Um, I think some of the field position that we gave them allowed them to do that. They didn't have to really operate from the 25-yard line and work their way all the way down the field. And so when you give them a short field, uh, I think they had a couple plays that got them down there quickly in the pass game. And then you know they're not really having to drive and put together a 12-play drive. It was you know more five, four or five plays. and. Um, and they're able to be physical down there in the red zone when they did that. And our defense is coming off of just being on the field. You know, so some of those turnovers created, you know, I think, opportunities for Penn State to, to be able to do that in the red zone. Brian. Yes, Brian, this result tonight or today could generate some talk about your job security. How do you handle that personally? And how do you handle that? Uh, how do you help your team and your coaching staff deal with that? Yeah, well, I mean, number one, you know, I'm always coaching for this football team. All right, these players, number one. And, you know, I can't control that. I can control, you know, what I do each and every day. Uh, what I've always done is coach for these team, this team, these players, these coaches, uh, make sure I'm doing my job, having our team prepared and all that. And, um, you know, I don't control any of those other things other than what I do and each and every day. So, and that's been no different since I've been a GA to being a head football coach. You know, I've operated the same way and had the same mindset. So. We put more expectations on ourselves than anybody else, all right? And that's always been that way. So uh, at the end of the day, I'm disappointed for our football team. And my job is to make sure that, that we put together a plan and put a football team out there that can go compete and, and play at a high level. And you know that's always the expectations. So um, the standard needs to be better than what it was. And, and that's really all we're gonna focus on. And, you know, and for our football team, it's the same thing. I tell those guys that, and, and I think the lessons in all this is, you know, when you're in it, when you're in the arena, which is what we do, all right, we're the ones that are in the arena each and every week, all right? We're the ones that put the work in each and every week, all right? That's what we can control. And, you know, I love being a part of that. I love I love putting plans together and, and processes and all those things so we can do that. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is why we get a chance to do what we do because we're good at it. And I believe in this team and I believe in what we're doing and we gotta be better at it. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's all I ever focus on. All right, Coach.